So it seems the Lakers are listening to offers for Kyle Kuzma. I think going into the season, a lot of us viewed him as the potential guy who could score 15, 16 points a game for them in the postseason. Because a lot of the other guys here are a little closer to specialists, whereas Kuzma can be a bit of a wild card. But we also knew that there was a chance that he wasn't going to be ready for playing on this really good team where there's not a lot of leeway with making mistakes, whether it's defensive rotations or taking a bad shot or whatever. And it hasn't been going great for Kuzma so far. Now, I don't think he's a bad player or anything, but maybe the Lakers would just want to get more of a safe bet for the playoffs. You know, another another 3 and D guy, maybe a versatile defensive wing or simply another shooter. I mean, there's a chance they're going to get Darren Collison for, to get another ball handler. So... Who knows? Maybe they'd want to send Kuzma out. So, of course, we're going to talk about this now. And looking at the salaries that they would include in a move, I'm guessing it would be like Quinn Cook or Boogie or uh, potentially Avery Bradley, although I don't really think they would give him up. They can't give up KCP or JaVale because of their no-trade clauses because they got one-year extensions with player options. Also, KCP's been kind of all right this season so yeah and I'm definitely not assuming that they would move like Danny Green or anything although you could get the salary up into the teens at that point but an interesting thing though is when I run the uh, NBA trade machine and I try to trade like Kuzma, Quinn Cook, and Troy Daniels for dudes who are making like 11 million it actually works which I was not expecting and as a result some moves become a little more possible than I thought going into this. I thought the Lakers were just going to only be able to get guys making like $7 million or less. Unless these trade machines are just lying to me. But, you know, if we start going from dudes making like $11 million and then going down, then I think the first name I would notice would be like Tony Snell. I mean, there's a chance the Pistons are going to do a tear down here and Snell has been pretty all right. I mean, the dude's 6'6", can defend at least two positions, and he's shooting 43% on four threes a game right now. Solid enough veteran who will come in and just do his job and not do too much else, which is maybe all this Laker team really needs. Covington does fit into this as well. I'm still on the don't trade Covington train if I'm the T-Wolves because... I just don't think Covington is the problem there. But there have been rumors that Minnesota might move him, and I mean, I don't know, maybe they would be like, well, Kuzma, maybe he's our chosen one. I don't really believe that. Uh, Another one would be Aminu on the Magic. Solid enough, versatile defensive wing who can hopefully make open threes for you. As far as why the Magic would do that, just a little more offensive punch with Kuzma pretty much. Aminu was not good in the playoffs, so for whatever that's worth, but he could get some open shots with LeBron and stuff. If you simply want another shooter, there's each one more, making eight and a half million. And I mean, hell, if you, if the Pelicans want to complete their Lakers of the South, then you might as well get Kyle Kuzma, right? I say Lakers of the South as if Los Angeles is not on the southernmost part of California. Um, Shout out to the geography teachers watching. Okay, let's talk about Bogdan, because this has been something that I've seen a little bit on the Twitters. I mean, first off, who the hell knows if the Kings would actually want to move him. But if he was really available, I just feel like somebody else would make a better offer than Kyle Kuzma in a dead second round pick. Because the Lakers would be trading some pick in the mid-2020s and... I mean, there's a chance that LeBron and AD are gone at that time, and that pick is pretty damn good, but there's it's probably not going to be that good of a second. And I just feel like there's going to be a better offer out there. Another name who's in the like six to $7 million range who could be your third dude to get you some buckets, speaking of the Pistons again, Derek Rose. He's not really making his threes this season, and it would probably 
well, maybe force Rondo out of the rotation, but we could argue that Rondo has been kind of bad this season, so that could be a possibility. Now, would that be a good move for the Pistons? I don't know. I guess it would depend on Derrick Rose's market, which could be better than Kuzma and some stuff. So, yeah, I mean, there's a chance that a Kuzma move, it wouldn't be some exciting trade. I mean, even if there would be a way for the Lakers to get into, let's say, the $15 million range, which, if there is, I have no idea what it is, I still don't know who would even be available and who could actually make a difference for you. I mean, if a guy's good, usually teams want to hang on to him. Like, for example, Marcus Morris, 15 million. Could he help out the Lakers? Yeah, potentially. Could they actually get to 15? I mean, if you do like a six or seven players for one move in ESPN's trade machine, then it works, but you can't actually do that. So, I don't know. You want to do some like Avery Bradley, Boogie, Quinn Cook, and Kuzma for Marcus Morris, Damian Dotson, and this dude whose name I can't pronounce in the Knicks? I don't know. Now if we go to various dudes making $2 million a year, there's Alec Burks, who's having a moment for the Warriors. And there's Josh Hart, if you want him back. Just do a Kuzma for Hart switch. Even then, I don't really know if the Pelicans would be down for that. And you know, there's various other dudes making 2 3 $4 million, but there's a lot of names in the NBA, and so... I don't know if I want to keep reading random, like, one-off NBA players... I guess we could talk a little bit more about the potential of Kuzma just fitting in well. I mean, he did get hurt, and it's going to be tough to walk into a team like this one, but, you know, he has played a decent amount of games at this point. I mean, he has played 27 games, and you would think that would be enough to kind of figure out his place here, and, I mean, he's had some okay point totals. I mean, if you go down his game logs, he actually has more like 10, 11, 12 point games than at least I thought on an, after my initial thoughts, but he also has quite a few games where his efficiency isn't really there and that doesn't take into account his inconsistencies on defense and uh, that's kind of where it is right now with Kuzma. You know, it's okay to be inconsistent when the team's bad, but this team's trying to win a championship, so it's like, how much room do they really have to be like, oh, Kuzma doesn't have it tonight, you know? So, I guess those are the questions the Lakers have to ask themselves, and, you know, I named a few names here and there, but I don't think a Kyle Kuzma trade would be as exciting as we might think. That doesn't mean it couldn't be a good move for the Lakers and potentially somebody else because maybe Kuzma with a change of scenery and a little more freedom on offense could be uh, good for him, could be bad for him. <laughs> Who really knows? Anyway, that's about all I got.